After many years of working with numerous agencies, town citizens, and the New York Department of State, in 2004, the Town of South Hole Town Board adopted the Town of South Hole Local Waterfront Revitalization Program, known as the LWRP. With this adoption, the town absorbed the power of the New York State Coastal Management Program and committed to managing its natural, scenic, and historic resources at the local town level. The adoption of the LWRP is significant in that the program defends the public rights and assets of the citizens of this town. The right to swim, shellfish, fin fish, boat, and walk along public beaches unimpeded the right to enjoy the history and unparalleled scenic view sheds of the town, and the right to clean waters. As a town, it is our responsibility to continue to protect these rights for this and future generations to come. The LWRP helps us accomplish this. It establishes a framework by which the town agencies and staff assess and make decisions on most projects. It enables these projects including state and federal, to be evaluated against 13 policies that are specifically South Hole designed with the goal of developing the best project possible while balancing private and public interests. Another benefit of the LWRP is that it allows the town to enjoy a priority position over other towns when it seeks to obtain funding. The town of Southhold has received $1.6 million from the New York State Environmental Protection Fund Local Waterfront Revitalization Program to assess, manage, and protect our resources. Some funded projects include the establishment of a seed clam grow-out program and the construction of street end access improvements and planning for stormwater management. More recently, the town was awarded $150,846 to plan and update the South Hole Town Code and $260,000 for stormwater management. The documentary you are about to watch is made possible by the continued support of the South Hole Town Board and New York State Department of State. Thank you and enjoy the show. town's most valuable natural resources, its shorelines. You might not notice the sandy beaches here because we're at our salt marsh area that we have throughout South Old Town. At this interface between land and water, South Old Town trustees have jurisdiction 100 feet upland and our jurisdiction continues throughout our salt marshes and out into the bays 1500 feet. But before we get into too many of the details, let's hear a little bit about the history of the South Old Town Trustees. Now, the Trustees have a long history, it dates back to the Andros patent, uh, which dates back to 1676. At the time of Dutch occupation, South Old Town was already formed. By, at 1640 and then on, South Old Town had its own government. And it really it relied on New England for all its legal affairs. When Dutch um, control and English control was, was changed in Manhattan, the English wanted to make sure the eastern Long Island stayed in English control. And Governor Andros issued what they called letters patent to the East End towns to make sure that they would be under control, uh, English control. Southall reluctantly took the patent 
they had to pay supposedly every year two fatted sheep for the for the privilege of being under English control. They didn't want to because it was a form of a tax. Not, in, in government and politics, nothing's really changed since then. So, so now Southold's officially under English control. Uh, you go through, once you go through the Revolutionary War, and now we have a new country, and then a state of New York, the, the new state of New York in the 1790s uh, confirmed the colonial patents, saying that the towns on Long Island that had received colonial patents from the king and his agents still owned the underwater lands in the town. Now, this is really important because the underwater lands and the, the marshes and the, the, the bayfront and the creeks were a tremendous natural resource for the settlers here. You had sand you could mine, you had gravel that you could readily get, you had all the shellfish resources, and very importantly you had the salt hay here which was harvested for the animals. It was basically a, a crop that the farmers could harvest without having to plant it or tend it. And that's why these cedar posts are here from really from colonial days where people could put the fence up and they could um, at seasonal times so they didn't damage the marsh, they could use this for pasturage. So the, um, what, the, the, what the patent did was protect these lands for the public use, and that's the most important part. And as you go through the history of the town, you'll see that the, the needs of the town for these areas change, but the important part is that it's always still protected as a public use. You, nobody's harvesting salt hay anymore. There's a lot of restrictions about mining sand and dredging for material and whatnot because obviously it's a limited resource. There's strict limits on shell fishing now, again, because it's a limited resource. However, the public access part of it is just as important today as it was back in colonial times because, because it's public lands and everyone has the right to use those public lands.